Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Split Tech City podcast. Today our guest is Michael Freer. Hello Michael. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Doing well, you? All good, all good. Yeah, back in Split after a few days in the UK and I can actually see blue sky. Yeah, that's a benefit here, right? That's one of the benefits. One yeah. of the benefits. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Why Split? Why come here from the UK except for the sky? Yeah, <clears throat> well, as you know, I've been here for six years now. So Split's doing something right. <clears throat> and I live just outside of Split. But yeah, I moved uh, to Split originally. Part, actually, a big reason is the weather, uh, but also the surrounding kind of areas with the islands, the sea, the mountains. Um, and also knowing Split's a bit of a smaller place compared to cities in the UK. Uh, and, and seeing that there's certain communities here. My, my main focus is normally on social enterprise and there was a very uh, underdeveloped social enterprise scene here. So I saw it as an opportunity to come and kind of get involved and influence and help out. So that was your main reason for coming here? Business, sort of? Um, well, it was looking at that balance. It was looking at moving to a place uh, in Europe because uh, back then the UK was in Europe, that I could move to easily, um, that I could uh, easily get home <clears throat> back to the UK from, uh, but somewhere that would offer me a different kind of lifestyle that I'd experienced previously when I lived in Spain. And I didn't want to move back to Spain. I didn't want to move to the other countries. I kind of slowly looked at all of those countries and ticked them off and said, OK, this is why I don't want to move there. And then with Croatia as well, a completely different language to uh, any I'd learned before. Um, not really knowing Croatia too well. I'd been here twice before, but never actually to split. Um, and then looking at when I, I saw Khwad had the most number of sunny days in Europe, I was like, well, that must be in a good location for me. Because I hate, I, hate I hate cloudy weather. Um, I don't mind it to be cold, but as long as I can see the sun. And yeah, we don't really have that in the UK. And I think Croatia has that in abundance, definitely down here in Dalmatia. So that was one of the boxes that was ticked yep. on that list. Yep. What were the others? Um, the others were the ability to go on kind of day hikes. Uh, before moving back, I was in New Zealand for three months, just traveling around. And that was stunning. Um, so well organized, but still very um, kind of raw. And you always felt like you were in the middle of kind of nowhere there were people obviously on the hikes and trails and stuff but it just felt untouched and i think again croatia offers that in abundance it, probably even more so than new zealand uh in terms of the rawness but it's not very well organized which is maybe why it's like that but when you know where to go then it's it's amazing i can agree definitely to that and let's go back a little bit to the business aspect uh, social enterprise. <coughs> what is it that you do? What is it? Okay, so for social enterprise, I um, run a consultancy firm. So I help idea stage or early stage social startups um, develop their business idea, develop their kind of revenue streams, because a lot of them come from a non profit background where they're not used to actually selling a product or a service. So I help them develop that product or service, get it onto the market. Um, Talk, think about marketing and sales strategy uh, and think about planning planning ahead three or five years um, in, a, in a business way. Because when you think about, say, nonprofits and charities, the way that they plan is very much project to project. They apply for one or a two or three year project from some fund, maybe a government fund or an EU fund. Um, <clears throat> once that project's coming to an end, they're either looking to continue at, through another project or it ends and stops. Whereas to have a successful business, you can't do that. You don't have a product. Normally, you don't have a product for two years and it stops. Maybe you maybe there's extension strategies for that product to keep selling it in different ways, as we see with certain like one, two, three, four, five. But with other products, you're always looking at how do I get more of the market? Um, so changing their thinking and helping them with that. Um, that's the main goal at the moment. Through through that, I work with companies here in Croatia, uh, in Serbia, UK, uh, and then further away in um, Kenya in Nepal and in Tanzania as well. So a good mix, an interesting mix. Interesting mix <clears throat> indeed. Now that we touched upon the topic of startups, uh, you've been here for six years and Split has done quite a bit of growth in that time period in terms of the startup ecosystem. What's your point of view on it? Uh, yeah, it has done quite a lot. And what's funny is when I got here, um, you would right now be working for Startup HR. 
but now you're Spit Tech City. Yeah. Um, and I was really fortunate. I found I landed um, when I first arrived. I started work for uh, Cedra Split um, in Split Three, and after a couple of months working there, I met Romana from Club Mladic. And through Romana, I then met Tony, your boss, and <laughs> Lana from the university. And with that, boom, I was exposed to this startup community, um, both the academic side and what's, what's happening at the university, and also community side, what's happening in the private sector. Um, and yeah, and it continues to grow and grow. I think one of the biggest changes is the, um, the willingness to be kind of public and visible to the public. Before, when I first moved here, there was this view that, I don't know, people were not scared of being visible, but they thought that people might try and knock them down if they were. But now a lot more people are singing their own praises, and they should do, because there's a lot of success going around. Uh, and instead of just naming one or two people in the startup scene, or even more established uh, tech scene, um, you can name like tens now, you know? It's not, it's not hundreds yet, yeah, but but it's it's, it's growing. growing. It's yeah. growing. You can name probably individuals to that amount, but not not leaders or not not founders. Um, and that's yeah, that's purely to the work of the community, uh, the tech community, and uh, the uh, the universities as well, or, or key players at the university at, at the very least, um, and and other projects and programs that have kind of come to the fore in the last two two to three years. So. It's exciting. It's an exciting time to be here. It's really exciting, and I hope they appreciate it. Um, the students say it at the university, because they're the ones that are able to benefit at this this amazing time where there's still a bit of experimentation and learning, um, and with that comes the flexibility, uh, which is which is great to have. You know, there's not that kind of we've been doing it for ten years. This is how it goes. Uh, it's more like okay, we're trying to see what fits here because you can't adopt what works in Silicon Valley for split Dalmatia. Yes, true. You know, um, completely different market, completely different people, co everything, everything is different. And as much as some people aspire to be like that, well, I'm sure we can be our own version of, of that. And yes. probably a better version. Yes. Where people aren't working 18 hour days. So. Yes, we, with more that work-life balance that we strive to yeah. get here. How did that change, by the way, for you, for the work-life balance? When, once Do you I change have to be honest? <laughs> yeah, you have to be honest. <laughs> One of the things I like uh, most about living here, and I, I noticed it coming back yesterday, actually this morning when I was coming here, uh, is how easy it is to turn off, just switch off. So I still work pretty hard, probably not as much as in, in London, but some days I do. But as soon as I I'd stop working or, or stop kind of thinking about work, I'm relaxed straight away. So today when I parked up near, um, near Stari Platz, I was walking down and then obviously get to the top of Marmontova, everything opens up and I'm like, I can breathe. Whereas the last 10 days in the UK, I was inside most of the time, it was miserable. And in London, even though it's so quiet at the moment because no one's traveling anywhere, it's, it was Christmas, there's COVID and all of that stuff. You, you're still kind of kind of on alert in a way, like you should be doing something. Whereas here, because I don't know what percentage of the population are just strolling around, it's just easy to relax. So, well, I balance, I'd say it's definitely a lot better here. And um, in the winter, I try and work a lot harder. And in the summer, I try and relax more. So I do the opposite to probably most yeah. Dalmatians. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so winter is my, my hard work time. Hard work time. So when it comes to work itself do you think that having a smaller city than some big cities in Europe or the world is beneficial to work because you have sort of a community that you can easily connect to yeah I, I think you know when you think about these huge cities and and some people like that um, to be anonymous and you are in a huge city you create a very small community here I have quite a, sm a small community but a really large extended one and not just not just split, not just Dalmatia, but actually across Croatia now. Um, over the past, say, three or four years, I've also been developing a bit more of a network in Zagreb as well. Um, and that's purely possible because of the size of Croatia and b because of the kind of the, I don't know, shared interest between the two places as well. Um, and then in terms of you as an individual coming to a place, depending on who you are as well, if that's what you're into, obviously you can have more of an effect on a smaller community than on a bigger one. 
um, and, and hopefully have more of a positive effect as well. That also works the opposite way. True. If you've had a negative effect, then it's a people might effect, avoid yeah. you. No, people will avoid you. And <laughs> true, indeed. And people will talk about you. <laughs> and but then, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't be able to have that negative effect once you're kind of yeah. secluded from yeah. the community. Kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> Sent away. But anyway, the community here is what, like, what's your point of view on like the gathering together between, let's say, Split and Zagreb, since you experienced both of those cities and we are a smaller city. We're not as big as Zagreb. So how do you feel that difference between the two cities? Um, I think it's hard for me to say exactly because I've been here and I've been here in a very concentrated way for a long time. Um, Zagreb, it's only really started to grow, um, like I said, over the last three or four years and still very focused in Zagreb. Uh, I'm not really part of any startup community in Zagreb or any, um, any other stuff that I do here like in terms of like university and stuff. Um, however, with like, social enterprise and things actually that's that's across Croatia that we're we're connected to a certain degree um, what I do see in Zagreb is because it is bigger and it is more spread out that maybe there isn't that same community feel um, that I get here in Split and that's purely from someone that has spent six years living here but goes to Zagreb maybe once a month these days so it's really hard to exactly compare but that's the feeling I get when I'm there that people were still, you know, it's, it's, it's a capital city, so yeah. not as, you know, not that you've got one river in Split where most people come to at least once a week. Um, whereas in Zagreb, you have like lots of different squares and then you have all the neighborhoods as well. So. so they gravitate basically towards their own smaller communities and not so well interconnected. That's the feeling I get um, based on the friends that I meet and where we hang out when I go there. So. OK. And uh, in terms of community here, what do you um, hope to see for the next five years, let's see? For the next five years, well, actually, before I, when I was driving here today, I listened to uh, when I interviewed Tony three or four years ago. Yes. The Split Tech Study. Because, <laughs> by the way, you used to do sort of a my job. <laughs> <laughs> this is a funny twist for you, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was replaced by, um, yeah, a lot taller, more beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, more Croatian people. <laughs> um, no, um, yeah, so I was watching that and he said, I asked him in 10 years time, this was in 2018, I think. In 10 years time, what, years time, what do you want to see more of? And he was saying about Split becoming this international um, city. And actually in the last two years, two to three years, the change has been remarkable. The amount of uh, international living here now, and I know that was a big push towards, um, you know, not definitely not changing culture, changing identity of Split, but actually having this, this mixture of people from different backgrounds, different professions that can share and inspire and motivate each other rather than maybe um, something from say 2016 that I, I, I'd seen before um, when actually Romana Lana and Tony were in it talking about young people and who do they have to look up to here um, and, and that's what I, I, I kind of hope to see continue and, and not like it's not just about having internationals here it's about having um, more it's more about having forget the foreigners it's more about having local leaders here that stand up and actually inspire others and that do it for the community um as we as we know some people doing that at the moment um to say like why it is such a great place to to live um why it should be developed by people living here who have the best interests in mind um rather than being you know, a split should be a place to live, not a split. I always say this as well, like it shouldn't just be a place for a weekend for all, or for a week. And now we're in the, we're in the, you know, in the Diocletian's Palace in the old walls and some very old walls. And we look around and, okay, we see some places that are completely derelict. We see some places that are just rental. And we see very few people living here because it's become that place where people are just here for a few days. And in the winter, then there's not as much life. Yeah. And if you have like think about Barcelona where you have that whole that whole scene you have the you have the um, the tourism scene obviously but then you have so many other industries that when you're down on the Ramblas it doesn't matter if you're there in the winter or in the summer there'll always be locals and there'll always be life and I think that's that's the thing that you know Split Tech City has been about that's what I've been about um, and that's what a lot of other people working in this community are, are all about so 
I hope that, yeah, in, in say five years time that we, we, we're here and there's more people walking past on a, on a day, on, well, it's between Christmas and New Year. So, yes. um, and, and hopefully that this place here, where we are right now, you won't see around, you'll just see the <laughs> beauty behind us, has turned into something that is actually for, for life, not just for, for summer. Yes. I would definitely agree and that's basically the main goal of the whole community gathering together that we want life throughout the year yeah. because Split deserves it. Yeah and, and that's not just Split like as you know I live in a village outside of Split which is dead. Um, my preferred place to live um, which hopefully in 2022 I'll be back there is Castella as well and Castella is very vibrant um, because it's still very local. Uh, hasn't necessarily caught it, it's caught onto the tourism thing but not like split uh, and then you go behind the mountains and all these places where you, people say moving to split or somewhere near split where they work like all of those places you want to see them having a community that grows that develops and that enjoys the place where they live um, because yeah uh, like touching onto the first question what else does say split Dalmatia Croatia have like uh, the water is amazing here it's not all um, chlorinated and stuff like in the UK. Um, the food, it's mostly organic, uh, especially if you know people, it's all fresh, it's seasonal if you want it to be. Um, people are very warm and welcoming um, once you break through that, maybe that initial icy exterior, uh, which you might see in, you know, if you come here just for a few days, you might see that in the supermarket or on the streets, but once you're through that, you know what people are like, they're mush. Yeah, Very, yeah. <laughs> we are. And, I, and I see that with you, actually, like uh, I see all the praise you get on social media uh, where people are like, oh, Nicolina, she's so warm and welcoming and she got us these presents for Christmas and all of that stuff, you know, and that's just a perfect sign of what people are like. here. Yeah, because, but we are like that yeah. here. I mean, I wouldn't be able to be any different. Yeah. Being brought here, brought up here and being raised here. So that's it. That's it. So that's one thing that people don't really experience if they're only here for three days. You have to be here for a long time. I think I have about 20 grandmothers now. Yes, yes, that <laughs> happens to you, yeah. <laughs> 20 grandmothers, 40 mothers, it's yeah. kind of the way we yeah. go here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, th th a few other things as to why, yeah, why, it's kind of where I see Split in the future, but like I said, not just Split, but other places around here and all over. And you mentioned internationals uh, before. Now we come back to one specific type of internationals, mm -hmm. and that's digital nomads. Mm -hmm. They got an opportunity to be here for a year with the digital nomad mm -hmm. residence permit that's been approved at the end of last year and has been in use since January this year. Yeah. And uh, what's your point of view on that? How do you think that can benefit both the startup community here, the tech community and at large the country? Yeah, well, I think there's two ways of looking at that permit or visa. So first of all, as you rightly said, uh, it's an, a very new, it was only the beginning of 2021 that it was launched um, to give digital nomads people that are here uh, that want to move to Croatia for up to a year and work but not for Croatian companies right um, essentially whatever they're working on is tax-free um, that, that's why it's different to the other permits that already exist yes uh, for true. third nationals um, a lot of people um, forget that they shouldn't really be working here sometimes um, but that's fine um, and so you look at them and you're like, okay, they are the people that are going to move around and explore different parts of Croatia. And with that, if they only come for, say, six or 12 months, cool, they're going to be a great tool for one of all, well, first of all, showcasing Croatia to the world, showcasing all the different areas. And secondly, hopefully, uh, which is what we're working on at DNA Croatia, is putting back into the community, um, whether it's about their experience, their knowledge, their skills, um, for example, with younger people, again, like university students, when you're at university, and I remember I was guilty of this too, you're studying business, yeah, you're doing, you're at economic effects, you're studying, say, marketing. What do you want to be when you're older? I want to be in marketing. Okay, but have you seen the list of jobs that are in marketing? Yes. And then to actually meet some of these people who are, you know, oh, I'm an AB campaigns tester. That's it. That's their job. They're like, oh, that's all you do. Yeah, it's great. Or I'm a, I'm a Pinterest expert. You can make a living off Pinterest. Yeah, I really enjoy it. It's exactly what I, I, I spent all my time on it before. I became an expert and now I earn a living from it. Those kind of small kind of niche jobs, I don't think exist in abundance here. Maybe in Zagreb a bit more, then split and then the rest of the country, I'm really not sure about. So actually exposing people to those um, 
I suppose in locals to those digital nomads would be great. How do you get into that? What does it really involve? And you know, how do you earn from that? How do you find new clients? All of that stuff. Because again, we have all these digital nomads coming here year round. It says it speaks volumes about this country. Uh, and then they know that they're able to work for these companies outside. So you know, it's it's give and take. It's allowing them to experience the life that we live here, um, but also getting them to share the, how they do it with people here. Um, how you can actually earn an income maybe from outside of Croatia and therefore enjoy life in what's becoming a more and more expensive city uh, of Split. Um, and then the, the other side of that uh, is the people that want to move here long term. It's almost like bringing them here, giving them an option to stay here for a year. And we're also working on how we can extend that. You know, because I know and you know as well, a few digital nomads that are here that actually want to stay, stay here yes. for another year and maybe another year and maybe, maybe forever. forever. Yeah. Um, I moved here for three months in initially. I'm going to test it. I moved in October 2015. I'm going to test it out, see what happens. Um, got here, found two jobs. Cool. I'm going to stay here for a year and see how things go. Now I've been here for six years. If I had moved here after Brexit, it would have been a l like it wouldn't have been impossible, but I wouldn't have been able to be a digital nomad. I would have been I would have had to have worked on a work permit, and for the employer to get that work permit, they would have had to do some steps. They'd have to go to I don't know yeah. if I'd get employed yeah. basically All the legal because steps. the job that I got wasn't necessarily only one that uh, it wasn't a job that I had to get because of my expertise. They probably was a Croatian that could have got it. I just happened to turn up at the time that one woman was going on maternity leave and took over her role. So, yeah, like you don't want to miss out on people that are looking to come here to have a positive impact, to get involved in the community, to um, find out what the culture is and to, to really create stuff. Um, and hopefully with the permit and the future iterations, we'll be able to grab onto those people and keep them here. Because as we see, um, Germany Island is taking a lot of talent from Croatia. So I think it's about time Croatia took talent from some other places, as well as keeping their own. Yes. Keeping it. Yeah. True. Keeping our own. Yeah. OK. Uh, <laughs> true. <laughs> I stand corrected. But anyway, that aspect that you mentioned of digital nomads kind of giving back. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we started our locals and nomads to kind of get that mix of digital nomads having an opportunity to interact with the locals yeah. because you usually with the meetups you get just digital nomads yeah and here we had a mix to kind of get them the opportunity to interact with locals but also to get the locals to feel the digital nomad community to you know get inspired get asked questions because if you're a local you you're obviously not a nomad so that's you can it. learn a lot from them that's it yeah no I love the locals and nomads uh, meetup it was great when you started doing that I was really happy for you to do that um, obviously you've been involved with digital nomads and foreign locals you know you've always involved the wider community as much as possible um, and Tony's very active in doing that and encouraging people to move here all the time. Yes, true. Um, <laughs> I always see like the same foreign friends of Tony's like, oh, you're here. Are you here permanently? Oh, well, soon, you know. It's we always... moved one here actually oh, in yeah? October. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Um, so, yeah, so that's great. And obviously there are other things that we've partnered on before and we'll continue to partner on like Hack for Split. We've always managed to get digital nomads involved in that and also foreigners here as well as locals like that's going to be this year as well. Um, with DNA Croatia, we are doing a couple of workshops um, and you're more than welcome to come, um, which is going to be kind of the beginning of Hack for Split, which is looking at local problems and how to come up with solutions to that. Uh, and we're going to invite the local nomads to that. Um, yeah, to really get them involved, because as you as as you also know, like having that fresh perspective on things, whether you go into a new job and you have new ideas that that kind of that that company was looking for, whether you go to a new place and you see things in a different way, um, changing that kind of ne moje attitude to the moje attitude, right? Um, so that, that's the kind of thing that digital nomads might be able to bring because they've travelled a lot, they've seen different things, and they can they come up can come up with suggestions and whether they're going to work here or not. We try them, we see, and hopefully they work and they improve things for everyone. True. Now, last question. 
quick one. Like I really want a quick answer. Okay. Five things you love about Split. Okay. Um, I've I've named them already. Uh, next to the sea, next to the mountains, the food, the drink, and the community. Thank you for this lovely chat today. And you guys, if you want more content like this, follow Split Tech City on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Bye.